Hello everybody and welcome back to the next installment in our physical material series. In the previous clip, we've created this awesome looking raw wood material. And in this clip, we're going to make it look completely different by giving it some varnish treatment. So we're super excited about this one and we can't wait to get started. So let's get started. Right. So um, we're going to be creating the varnish effect with the help of the new built-in clear coat layer that you can find in the Corona physical material. And this layer is a pretty awesome thing that we hope you're going to be using for a lot of your materials. And we're really confident that it's going to make your life easier whenever you're going to want to create the clear coat layer effect. Now, before we actually start creating the material, let's first talk about what a clear coat layer actually is. Now, a super typical use case of clear coat layers can be found in the car industry. It's typically the first example people think of when they think of the word clear coat. So with car paints, you typically have a rougher base layer, which because it's rougher, it doesn't feature that shiny reflective look. And then on top of it, you have a clear coat layer applied to it. Well, technically for cars, they typically apply a couple of clear coat layers, but they can be easily summarized by a single clear coat layer because the differences between them are just so tiny, okay? But anyway, the point is that the clear coat layer that's applied on that base, the clear coat layer then creates those nice shiny reflections that car paints typically feature. Now, but that isn't the main reason why they apply a clear coat layer to car paints, mind you. Typically that is done to also protect the underlying layers of paint from weathering. Right, okay, so that's the general idea behind the whole clear coat ordeal. It's a thin strip of clear, transparent coating that you apply on top of your base material. Now, car paints aren't the only materials where we apply the sort of protective coating, protective film, if you will. Because another example would be applying varnish to the different kinds of wood materials. <laughs> and that's exactly what we'll be doing here in our case. So now, if you think about it, varnish is basically a thin, clear, and transparent protective coating that we apply to raw wood materials to protect them from weathering. But not only that, they add that nice looking reflective property to the wood as well. Plus, a clear coat, if it has some sort of an absorption property, can also get you that nice stained look. Now, a pretty important distinction that you absolutely should remember is that the clear coat layer is a separate layer that gets applied on top of the base layer. Now, in the context of the material that we were creating in the previous clip, the base layer is basically all we have so far because our diffuse texture has been defined in the base layer, right? Then roughness, so the way our reflections behave was also defined in the base layer and the bump in the IOR as well. So for all intents and purposes, the material that we have in front of us here has been defined in that base layer. So what we're going to do here to add that varnish effect is we're going to add a clear coat layer on top of the base layer here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense because that is a pretty important distinction here. Now, how do you enable the clear coat layer? Well, it's pretty easy and super straightforward. All you need to do is you need to go under the basic menu, basic channel here, locate the clear coat layer toggle and just toggle the thing on. And as soon as you do that, you're going to see that now that clear coat effect is in full swing, right? So it kind of looks like there's been this clear coat layer applied on top of that base layer. And that's, that's exactly what we want it to do, right? And that's exactly what the clear coat layer does. So things start to look more reflective. And if you look at the entire thing more closely, it looks like it really looks like this clear coat layer is this sort of layer with some thickness that's applied on top of the base layer. So that's looking exactly like we wanted it to look. Now, what you would probably want to do at this point is, you know, you would want to customize that clear coat uh, layer, right? And to do that, all you need to do is you need to hop under the clear coat layer menu slash channel here, and you'll be greeted by all the clear codes uh, parameters, right? Now we're going to be tweaking all of these as we'll be creating that varnish effect on our violin body. And as we do that, 
you know, we're just going to be talking about what they do um, in more detail, you know, and we'll be starting with the amount parameter. Okay. So the clear code layers amount parameter, what it does is, is it basically controls the strength of the clear code layer. Okay. So at a value of hundred percent, the clear code layer is at its full strength. And as you can see, you know, it looks uh, really reflective. And then also it has this sort of thick quality to it. Like it's been really generously applied on top of our base layer, right? Right. Now, if you start lowering the, uh, uh, the value of, uh, here of the amount parameter, right? Well, then you're going to see that, yes, the reflections are still there. Uh, you know, there is some sort of a clear code layer still applied on top of that base layer here, but it looks like it's just a lot less stronger. It kind of has this thinner quality to it, if you will. Right now, um, you know how you can use this amount sizer. Well, you know, again, it controls the strength of the clear code layer, but you know, visually it also looks like, you know, you're kind of, you can also play around with kind of, uh, selling the thickness of the clear code layer as well. So at a value of hundred percent, you know, everything does kind of look like, um, it's been more generously applied, right? The clear code layer has been more generously applied. You lower the value, you know, you get, you get a less generous amount of that clear code, uh, layer. Right. So that's how it looks like. That's how you can use it. Or, you know, you can just add imperfections onto the clear code layer this way by plugging in a map in here or something like that. Now the map, uh, that you want to plug in here is you'll want it to be black and white. Okay. And, uh, the darker parts are actually going to have a lower value and the lighter parts are going to have a higher value. Okay. So that's all working as you would expect it to Now, for our violence body here for the varnish finish. We're not going to use a texture in here because we do want to communicate that the clear code layer is pretty strong, right? Uh, we do want to communicate that it's been like generously applied and that's exactly the effect we're getting here. If we just have the amount set to a value of a hundred percent, right? Okay, cool. So that's the uh, amount parameter. Let's move on to the IOR parameter, the IOR parameter, you know, as you would expect it to control the index of refraction, but. There is one important distinction that you should make here, and that is that the index of refraction value here only applies to the clear code layer. Okay. We said this before, but the base layer is its own layer. The clear code layer, again, it's its own layer. These two are basically two different surfaces. Okay. So it's natural that the base layer has its own IOR parameter and that the clear code layer also has its own parameter, right? Because it is a separate layer. It is a separate surface, if you will. Okay. So, uh, with the IOR parameter here, you know, varnishes typically have an IOR value somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5. So let's just go with an intermediate value here of 1.35 or so. Okay. And I think that'll work just great for us here. Obviously, if you have an IOR map, you know, feel free to plug it in here. Uh, it's going to add even more detail to your material, but you know, we don't have it. So just a constant value here will, will do just fine for us really. Okay. So that's the IOR parameter, you know, pretty straightforward, right? Then we have the roughness parameter. Again, this one's going to be a bit straightforward. So uh, with the roughness parameter, uh, we're essentially controlling the roughness of that clear code layer. So if we start upping the roughness, check this out, the reflections of that clear code layer are going to be rougher and not as mirror like as they were before, right? Now, again, same distinction as with the IOR here. We're controlling the roughness of the clear code layer. The base layer, you know, separate layer, separate surface, has its own roughness. We're not negating that. But because the clear code layer is applied on top of the base layer, the clear code layer has its own roughness property, right? Right? So um, that's a pretty important distinction to make here. Just because, you know, you, with the clear code layers roughness, you're not negating what's happening on that base layer. The base layer stays the same, but the material, that clear code material that you're applying on top of the base layer, well, that one has its own roughness, right? Right. Now, at this point, we should also mention um, a bit of a workflow tip. If you go under the advanced tab here, and if, say, for example, you're using uh, a different roughness mode, you're using the glassiness mode, right? And if you're using the, not the IOR workflow for the IOR mode, but the Disney specular workflow, well, if that's the case, you know, it's not just the base layer that's going to get affected with these changes, right? It's also the clear code layer that's going to get affected. Okay. 
So uh, that, that's a bit of a tip for you there. Uh, these uh, roughness and IOR modes here, uh, they're going to affect your entire material, including your clear coat layer. But let's undo all of these changes here, just because we were perfectly happy with the roughness mode and the IOR workflow. So um, yeah, let's ju let's just leave it like this. Okay, and uh, what we'll do next here is we're actually going to finalize the roughness, um, well, the roughness parameter. Okay, so right now, you know, we have this, uh, we have our reflections be a bit rougher, but we do want to break them up a little bit. We want to introduce some uh, details here. Okay, so to do that, you know, you typically just plug in a bit of a roughness map into the roughness slot. And that's exactly what we'll be doing here. We have a roughness map prepared here, and it's basically this uh, splatter map, if you will. Right, so that's just going to break up our reflections a little bit here, and we're going to plug it into the clear coat layers roughness slot. Okay, not the base layers roughness slot, not this guy right here, but clear the clear coat layers roughness slot. All right. Now, as soon as we do that, check this out. We're adding imperfections to our clear coat layer. Now it is looking pretty cool, but it is looking a bit strong. So uh, let's sort of fine tune this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to bring in a new shader, a new Corona shader, uh, and that's going to be the color mix shader. So just bear with us here for just a second as I plug in that roughness map for the clear coat into the color mix shader. And then I'm going to plug the color mix shader into the clear coat layers roughness lad. Now, why, why do we just do all this? Well, you know, um, with the, uh, if you're in the clear coat layer here, Okay, and if you've plugged in a map into the roughness slot, well then, if you'll remember, uh, this slider here now works as a mixed slider. So essentially right now, we're mixing 50% of this map on top of 0% roughness, right? But what we can't quite control right now is, you know, on top of what we're mixing this roughness map, okay? We're mixing it on top of 0% roughness, but what if we would like to mix it on top of 20% roughness, right? Well, you know, the color mix shader can be of great help to you here because, uh, you know, in here, you, again, you have this mixed strength slider that mixes this map on top of, you know, on top of something. And what it mixes it all on top of is this color here. Okay, by default, it's set to white, but you don't have to go in here and use the color chooser, what you can instead do is you can tweak the brightness slider. Okay, so now that we've pulled the brightness slider to zero, we've essentially set the brightness of this color to be zero, and that's going to result in a black color. Okay, so if we uh, disable the mixing of that map on top there, now you can see we end up with this black color. And what that means is we're dealing with 0% roughness, All right? So what we can now do is we can say, okay, Let's tweak the general look of the roughness. All right. So maybe something, a value of 25% will do. So we're ending up with this sort of grayish color, right? As our base, our reflections are a little bit rougher, right? And now what we can do is we can start mixing uh, the, the map on top of that, right? And so that just gives you a little bit more of that extra control, right? Now, what we should also make sure here to do is that our roughness uh, in, in our clear code layer, right, that our roughness slider here is set to 100% because now we're mixing 100% of this color mix shader. Um, well, it's essentially overriding the roughness value. So we're mixing, we're just using this color mix shader here to drive the roughness, right? Okay, so it's just a bit of a different way on how you can fine tune things. And actually, I think the reflections really look great now. So we'll just leave everything as it is. Don't think we need to tweak it any further. All right. Okay. So that, you know, that means, uh, well, now, now we've pretty much set our roughness to be the way we want it to be. Uh, I hope the video compression here is not clean, uh, you know, is not kind of making these details be hard to, to spot, but we are getting some really slight imperfections uh, here and there. And I, I think that's going to work great for us here. Okay. So um, that's pretty much the roughness parameter in a nutshell. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next parameter on the list here, and that's going to be the bump parameter. And you know, for the bump parameter to, to do anything, you need to plug in some sort of a map in here. So we have a map prepared, you know, probably nobody's surprised about that at this point. And it's just this sort of imperfection map here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to plug it directly into the clear code layers bump slot. 
All right. And then we also need to enable that uh, bump slot. Okay. And just by doing that, as you can see right now, you know, we've added some sort of bump irregularities uh, to our clear code layer. Okay. But there's a little bit more uh, to how the bump map here behaves and how you can use it. Okay. Uh, sorry, not the bump map, but the bump slot. So if we disable the bump slot right now and we focus on what we have in front of us here, is that uh, you're going to see that um, the base layers bump is still there. You can still see those uh, a bump map in irregularities that we set up in that base layer, right? So all of all of what we set up in the base layer is still there, right? That that base layer is still imperfect because of that bump map, right? But now you know uh, we're applying a clear code layer on top of that. Okay, and if you were to put your surface, uh, sorry, if you were to put your hand on the surface right now, remember we have no bump map applied on our clear code layer. If you were to put your hand on the surface right now, it would be perfectly smooth because you know we have that base layer, and on top of it, we have a clear code layer applied to it. And the clear code layer, because it has no bump, is perfectly smooth. All right, but that does not negate what's happening underneath the clear code layer because the base layer, you know, that one's pretty, you know, it's it's pretty bumpy, and you can see that all of that is still there, right? But you know, we are applying a clear code layer on top of that, and the clear code layer itself, it's it's uh, outwards facing surface, right? That one is perfectly smooth because we're not using any bump uh, mapping on it. Now, if we if we enable the bump map. What's happening is, is that the base layer still retains its irregularities, right? But now the clear code layer is also imperfect with its own irregularities that we set up in, in its own bump channel. Okay, and you can clearly see that that is what is happening here. Now, let's just tone down the effect just a little bit here, because that one's just really too strong. So if we look closely, now you can see that that base layer's bump, that's still there. The base, uh, the base layer is still it still sort of has these irregularities, these bump irregularities, but the clear code layer, you know, has its own irregularities. But at this point, you know, you're probably wondering, well, how do I make the clear code layer follow the base layers bump? Well, the solution is pretty simple. All you need to do is you need to take the base layers bump, plug it into the clear code layers bump slot, you know, and now what's uh, happening is, is that the base layer, and the clear code layer share the same bump map. And that means that the clear code layer that's sitting on top of that base layer has the same bumps and bruises as the base layer. So basically the clear code layer is kind of perfectly fitting to that base layers uh, bump uh, imperfections, okay? So right now, the clear code layer, if you were to put your hand on this material right now, on this surface, you would, you would feel it exactly like you would feel it if there was no clear code layer because the clear code layer is following the bump map irregularities of the base layer because it's using the same bump map settings, okay? We're even using the same value percentage, all right? So that's how you make the clear code layer surface follow the base layer surface in terms of a bump map irregularities, okay? But, okay, what if you would want uh, the uh, clear code layer to follow the irreg irregularities of the base layer but also have some of its own irregularities. Well, in that case, what you could do is you could bring in a new shader, a new Corona shader. Uh, for example, the mixture shader would be really good here. And now what you can do is you can plug that base layers bump map, okay, into the base layer slot of our mixture shader. Then uh, for those uh, extra irregularities, you could plug in that uh, other irregularity map on top of the top layer in our mixture shader. And now in the mixture shader, what you could do is you could change the mix operation mode here from add to multiply. And now you can play with it with the strength slider here. And hopefully you're starting to get a sense of what's happening here. So now, you know, we have this base layers bump here. Okay. But now we're adding some extra irregularities on top of that base layers bump. All right. Okay. So if we were to now plug in this mixture shader into the clear code layers bump, well, now we're essentially saying, hey, clear code, you're following the bump map irregularities 
of that base layer. But at the same time, you have some irregularities of your own that the base layer doesn't, right? And that just adds some extra realism to the entire thing, you know? Now, um, there's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, it totally depends on the effect you're going for. And uh, sometimes the clear code layer perfectly follows uh, the bump map, uh, sort of the irregularities of the base layer, okay? At other times, it doesn't. It completely smooths that surface out. Or maybe it, ha it just has its own imperfections. Okay, so what we've essentially showcased here is that you can really approach this from multiple angles and you can really, um, you can really dial in those details really precisely with just these couple of techniques that we showed here. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, to finish things off, uh, we have one more parameter to talk about here, and that is the absorption parameter. What the absorption parameter does here is, well, it's spectacular. It's really useful. Okay. We're really proud of the absorption parameter. What it does is it defines how light of certain wavelengths is absorbed. All right. Now, uh, what that means for you is, uh, anytime that the uh, light hits your material, you know, it has to pass through the clear coat layer first, okay? And since the clear coat layer can absorb light, you know, differently, then the entire material will look visually different, all right? Now, absorption is a physically accurate, physically realistic parameter, and it'll affect your material in a very realistic way. All right, that's really important to note. The changes you make with the absorption parameter are physically accurate, physically realistic. All right, now let's just let's just quickly demo how the absorption parameter works here. So right now its value, its color, is set to fully white. That's okay. That just means that it's not absorbing any of the light uh, wavelengths. Okay, it's just letting everything pass through it. And some clear coat layers definitely behave like that. Okay. But, you know, sometimes uh, they do absorb uh, light differently, okay? So, uh, in our case here, what we're going to do is we're going to set our value to be this brown color. And immediately what you'll be able to see in the interactive renderer is that now our material looks completely different, all right? Um, so, as you can see, you know, uh, because of that clear coat layer, uh, because the clear coat layer is absorbing the light differently, Anything below the clear code layer, uh, you know, it will be visually affected. It will be visually perceived to be different because, again, you know, the light, when it hits your material here, has to pass through that clear code layer first. And because that one absorbs light differently, you know, the entire material will look visually different. And that is physically accurate, physically realistic behavior. All right. Now, again, the absorption parameter here is a realistic parameter. It's not just some sort of a fake tint on the diffuse part of your material or anything like that. If, if for example, we make our material here refractive, okay, and then if we go back into the clear code layer and we set the absorption to be this, you know, this really strong color, um, you're going to be able to see, you know, that it's not just some sort of a cheap uh, diffuse tinting trick or whatever. No, the absorption parameter here behaves realistically. And again, at the risk of repeating ourselves here, the light has to pass through that clear code layer first, you know, and because that one absorbs light, you know, it absorbs some of those light uh, wavelengths, you know, the entire material will look different, including the refraction. So again, we're just trying to convey that this is a physically accurate behavior that you're seeing here. Okay, all right. So uh, let's reset our um, our uh, our absorption color here uh, to this brown color, and um, then let's also mention uh, how the color value here actually works. So uh, you know when you input uh, a color in here, that's the color that won't that technically won't get absorbed. Okay, and that's done uh, to make the material creation process a little bit easier. All right. So the thinking here is that all the colors but this brown color will get absorbed, all right? Which means that the tinting sort of uh, uh, that you'll see here is going to be uh, the, of this sort of brownish color, okay? And that's a really important um, sort of thing to note here is that this is not the color that gets absorbed. 
all the other co colors but this one sort of get absorbed okay and again that's done just because you know this way it's a lot easier to fine tune this uh the, the look of your material so you want this material to look a little bit more reddish well, plug in a red color there we go you know now it has this sort of red tint to it if you will okay so again you know absorption is it physically accurate physically realistic parameter here now, in the context of this material here that we're creating, so this uh, violent body varnished wood material, right? Well, uh, in the context of this material, we got to mention that in reality, this type of a material would be made up of uh, six to eight different clear coat layers. So that raw wood material would have six to eight different clear coat layers applied to them. Okay. Now, those layers are typically super thin and very similar to each other. Some of them, might be pigmented, okay, which will cause them to absorb certain light wavelengths differently. But ultimately, you know, there's six to eight of them typically on this kind of a uh, violent body varnished wood material, right? But as you've probably noticed, you know, we've been working with a single clear coat layer here the entire time, and we've recreated that effect perfectly pretty much, right? So what we're trying to communicate here is that the clear coat layer here is a super versatile um, layer, right? So what we're doing here is we're emulating six to eight different, but very similar clear coat layers that are typically applied to this kind of a wood material. And we're doing all that from right inside this one clear coat uh, layer here. All right. Now, yes, you, you could go in here, you could create a new Corona layered material and create all those six to eight different layers essentially by hand in a more complicated way, you know, but visually the result is going to be pretty much the same as the one we've gotten here. You just need to look at your material from sort of a top level perspective, right? So uh, you combine what, uh, what those six to eight different clear code layers do and you emulate them with the help of the single clear code layer that you can find in the Corona physical material. Just by playing around with the absorption, as you've seen, right? Just by playing around with the IOR parameter and so on and so forth. You know, you can easily emulate all those layers using the single clear code layer here. Now, there are materials out there in real life, there's so many of them actually, that only have a, a single clear code layer applied to them, you know? Um, and for those, the procedure is exactly the same. You take a look at the material in real life and then you try to recreate it using the parameters that you have here. In that case, you're not emulating as much as you're, you know, um, just recreating how things are exactly created in the real world. But, you know, the end result is again going to be the super realistic looking material here. Okay. Now, as far as um, what kind of materials have uh, clear code layers, well, you know, there's obviously car paints. And then as you've seen, there's uh, uh, wood materials, right? They can have a varnish, uh, apply to them, and that's a form of a clear code layer, essentially. Uh, and then you have different plastics that can have different kinds of clear code layers applied to them. Uh, you've got different kind of metals, metal materials that can also have a clear code layer applied on top of them, and so on and so forth. So hopefully here, you know, you're starting to get a sense of just how useful the clear code layer can be. It can drastically change your material. We went from that raw wood material to this nicely varnished uh, violin body wood material here by just, you know, enabling the clear code there and playing around with its basic settings here. Okay. Now, just to finish this material off, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to adjust the bump value here. I think we can lower it just a little bit to get more of that uh, pristine varnish look going. And, you know, Obviously, we could still tweak it, but I think this is looking pretty great as it is. And again, you know, the only thing that we did here, we enabled the clear code layer. We played around with some of the basic settings in here. And, you know, then we ended up with this realistic looking material. So we would really like to encourage you to play with the clear code layer because the results you can get out of it, well, they speak for themselves, don't they? All right. So uh, thank you for tuning into this one. We hope you've learned a lot. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.